Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, my name is Rachel and today we are going to be doing a little bit of a 23andMe genetics test. So I actually filmed um, the first part of this video about two weeks ago and I sent in my spit. Basically, I took you through the whole process of like opening it up, unboxing it. What's up you guys? I am gonna do this 23andMe DNA test that I bought back in December, but yeah. Do you know how to do this, Mom? Yeah, but it's fine. Right now? Yeah. Wait, just wanna edit? Yeah. Do you know how to do this? No. Nope. Instructions in here. Oh my god, I can't open it. <laughs> <laughs> Have to register it? Yeah. You do? Yeah. It says register your kit. We do, right? Who said that? Well, suffice answer to that. Friday today. It says no food or drink for 30 minutes, spit to the fill line. But, what is this? That's the cover, I think. What, let me see, is it round? Will you pull this out after you, you spit in it, and oh. then you cover that too? Oh. Okay, just, just spit all of that? Yeah. It's kinda gross. It's your, um, Mouth feel clean and yeah. neutral, like yeah. no taste. Okay, then you keep doing that. Okay, don't record it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. What? Take the lid out? Do I close it? No, twist it. Wait, I have to close it all the way though, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter, I'm gonna twist it and cap it with that one. And will this oh, mirror on your TV upstairs? How do I mirror it? On this one? It will mirror it. What don't you guys, are you guys concentrating? Detach funnel. Okay. How do I detach the funnel? This? Oh my god. Results in like what, two weeks? Results in they'll contact you. Oh, great. <laughs> um, not necessarily like spitting in it because that's a little uh, not okay. <laughs> you wouldn't be interested in just me spitting into like a tube. So I left that part out. But I did get my results about a week ago and I looked at it. So this isn't going to be like a first impressions, but I just want to give everyone a little bit of a. Um, understanding of how it looks like etc so I'm going to be doing a little bit of a screen recording right now let me pull that up and I also really really hope that my camera isn't going to die because right now I forgot to charge it the Sun is setting this is poor planning on my part and I don't want to put in like a little backdrop or anything so uh, it's okay it's okay, everything, everything is fine. You know that meme Bonk. where like the dog's like, everything's fine, everything is fine, and everything's burning around him. I'm not at that point yet, but you see? <laughs> okay, so when you first open up your results, you have to obviously log into your account, and as it continues going on, basically what happens is um, you can see like your ancestry and the breakdown of it. So 
scrolling down I can like view my ancestry composition but it's also more in like detail so I knew that I was Chinese and Filipino and I knew it was like I was only an eighth Filipino but it was pretty cool knowing that I was also Indonesian, Thai, Khmer, and Mian, 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 anyway, but yeah, so um, backstory of my family is my mom is full Chinese and my dad has a quarter of Filipino in his blood, so that's where my Filipino last name came about, and it, as you scroll down, it just kind of gives more of like, the heritage, the heritage is, oh my god, the heritages around your um, your ancestry basically and it's just really cool seeing how many DNA relatives you have etc etc and how much Neanderthal ancestry you have which is pretty sick um, and a little bit more of a scientific detail you can also compare it with like your family members who have a kit and you can like link them together or it's really fun if you do it with like your um, immediate family members so for example if my mom were to do it it'd be really cool seeing the different breakdowns of it um, something else that is also really cool is if you go onto the health side of it and you click the not just the overview part of it but all all of the reports it gives you a breakdown of what you potentially could have so like for example the you're predisposed to certain health concerns or health um, later in life so based off of what they have in their labs it just shows whether you are um if you have a variant for that or not so for the most part i'm their labs indicate that i am not really predisposed to really anything except for type 2 diabetes and that just like typically runs in i would say asian culture just because a lot of asian cultures we just really like to sit down but being like active and healthy and working at a gym really I am not too worried about the type 2 diabetes I think if anything I would be more worried about the BRCA gene because my grandma actually was um, diagnosed with the BRCA gene she actually just had a few surgeries to get some of it removed but other than that I mean type 2 diabetes something that I can control honestly and very grateful that I can actually do that so going down even more this is like for example the carrier statuses of your genes that you potentially could have a predisposition blah, 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 a predisposition to and for the most part actually i don't even think i have any variants for this but it's really really interesting how there are so many deficiencies diseases um just in general the amount of health predisposition genes that they have in their lab so that they can um, see if you have any of those genes and this is like based off of spit like what the heck so I thought that was pretty cool for the most part or at all there's no variance detected and then it's the wellness part of it where it's like really really interesting so being Asian I have so many friends that whenever they drink alcohol they just get red but I'm not that type of person and a lot of these are really really like they're pretty spot-on which is very very interesting so alcohol flush reaction I definitely do not flush I just cannot handle my alcohol really <laughs> caffeine consumption likely to consume less that is also true just because also at the same time I don't like caffeine doesn't affect me I could have so much milligrams of caffeine a couple of days ago I actually had like two cans of Celsius within a span of an hour and I was perfectly fine. In fact, I think I was more um, calm than anything. <sighs> Caffeine doesn't affect me, Adderall doesn't affect me, Vivance, whatever doesn't affect me, energy drinks doesn't affect nothing affects me is kind of where I was getting at and um, it's a good thing and it's also a bad thing. Good thing because I'm not like super addicted to it but at the same time bad thing just because I wish it did something to me, <laughs> you know what I mean? <coughs> deep sleep likely less to be a deep sleeper very very true I cannot sleep for the life of me and I also don't know if it's potentially just because like I don't have like I just drink too much water at the towards the end of the night so then my bladder is like haha just kidding you're not gonna be sleeping well so maybe that could be it I'm not entirely sure I know that I I am very much a light sleeper so that mm, you know 
Okay. Genetic weight predisposed to weigh less than average. I have like no comment on that basically just because I think that right now my perspective is a little skewed just because I am on bikini prep. Um, so we're gonna skip that. And then lactose intolerant. Yep, I am definitely intolerant. I'm not severe like my mom is. Like she can have, I don't know, a few bites of ice cream, a few sips of milk, and she like, <laughs> no, it's bad. But for me, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. Um, it takes a lot for me to be intolerant and have that kind of reaction. That's cool. And then the. I love this part, the muscle composition, which is common in elite power athletes. Oh my goodness. That's so flattering. <laughs> like, I was just so shocked that that was even a thing because being in like the fitness industry and the fitness space, it's just really cool that my genetic um, wellness is more common in elite power athletes and my muscle composition. So I thought that was the most fascinating part of this test really. <laughs> and saturated fat and weight likely similar weight and sleep movement likely more than average movement that might not be the case because i i toss and turn but that's only if it's like super hot so that's why i always have like a little tower fan or like some kind of ac going on in the back just because i don't want to i i don't want to move a lot during my sleep because being not a very deep sleeper i will wake up <laughs> so we're trying to avoid me waking up so many times at all costs and then I think the most that I've found to actually be very very accurate are the the dandruff part of it the earwax part of it uh, the fear of heights is pretty good too I think the fear of heights as in like roller coasters I'm good with but if you tell me to jump off a plane you best be sure that someone is going to be behind me i'm gonna be in like a tandem skydiving kind of thing and you're not even you're just gonna you're we're just walking you're not even gonna kind of count down because if you count down i'm gonna chicken out i'm gonna be scared but if we're talking more like roller coasters and going to six flags and stuff like that we're good Fear of public speaking, I feel like maybe when I was younger, obviously less confident and all of that stuff, it was very, very false that because I would really, really be scared of publicly speaking. But now I'm kind of like more outgoing, I'm loud. I usually am only scared of speaking publicly if I don't know my shit, which is why I do a shit ton of research because I want to know my shit. <laughs> I think that's just as an educated woman you want that and the hair photo bleaching oh my god every for the life of me like everyone that I would come across not everyone but like for the most part people would always be like oh my gosh did you ever get like your hair dyed or natural highlights or anything like that and I was like no it's just like my hair when I'm out in the Sun it just naturally gets um, a little bit there's like a little bit of a lighter tint to some parts of my hair I don't I don't know if you can kind of see well, a little bit right there. You see that? Just that. Um, there's some all over my head, but basically um, hair photo bleaching is you being able to have like those natural highlights in your hair due to like sun exposure, basically. So I thought that was pretty cool. And the hair thickness, likely to have thick hair. I don't know if it's because my mother decided to like shave my head bald when I was a baby, but um, I've heard that that was a little bit false. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I thought of it more along the lines of it's kind of similar to if you shaved your like your arms or your armpits or your legs or something for us gals over there or men too. I'm not gender neutral. Okay, whatever. Anyway, um, you know how like they always tend to grow back a little bit quicker, a little bit thicker. I thought that was the case, but I guess shaving it only once doesn't really do a lot, but I don't know. You know what I mean? It's just a thing. Then same thing with like the newborn baby hair. I am more likely to have baby hair. So whenever I tie my hair up, I'll always kind of like do this just because I feel like it also gives me a little bit more definition. And I do have like a ton of baby hair around my face in general. The wake up time, I was very surprised that they didn't really get this accurate. And I don't know if it's because I'm also not a very deep sleeper, but I used to be able to sleep 
only until right before nine. So maybe as gener generally speaking, it is very true, but I think because of like my weird schedule with work and having different clients at different hours, it's, and sleeping later versus like not sleeping so late, it's like my circadian rhythm isn't necessarily like on track. So that could potentially also be the reason why it's not fully accurate per se on the 23 and me but yeah i mean generally speaking anyone that i've really come across in terms of like their wake up time and they actually have taken the 23 and me genetics test pretty pretty spot on like within five minutes and it's just it's crazy to me anyway that is that is the end of this video i really hope you enjoyed it i will actually snap a photo right here of the test that i did take and you guys can do this too i think it's like super fun it's really interesting just knowing and being able to be like aware of what you're predisposed to and just quirks and stuff like the things that in your in your traits your wellness etc i think that's like really really fun to just know just have at the back pocket um, yeah i hope this video was it's not really like an informational video more of like it's fun it's entertaining it was fun to film it was it's fun to like share what i am basically to everyone here so i hope you guys really enjoyed it and if you did please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video it really lets me know whether you like this type of video or not and if i should continue doing these types of videos and don't forget to also subscribe and hit that cute little notification bell at the top corner just so you don't miss another video with me and i will see you guys in the next video thanks for watching guys bye